Yeah, guys, we're looking at the Neo Neo stock price. We're going to look at the um, chart today. Um, it's the 5th of November, 2024, guys. Just turned uh, 2,100 hours here in the UK. That's 9 p.m. in the UK. UK time, GMT, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, guys, we're going to be looking at the Neo stock, Neo stock price, price action. See if we can see any any indication of the next move. And uh, it's not financial advice, just my opinion. Let's have a look. Let's have a look, guys. Let's open the chart. Let's open the chart. And I, I've added to my position, but only 200 shares. I think that obviously you've got the US election and anything's possible with the stock markets but yeah and just aside from the US election really anything in general is possible you know stocks are volatile so not just the neo stock any stock you know prone to being bashed down prone to I mean you could you know something can happen in the world or politics or the economy or you know some disaster or anything like even if it's unrelated to a particular stock or stock sector that stock you know or stock sector can suffer can suffer you know we're looking at the um 10 minute chart let's just change it to the one hour chart that could suffer the point is that anything happens people while people trying to you know figure out what's going on what what you know how it's going to affect the stock market that stock sector individual stocks etc people sell in panic obviously and <clears throat> also shorts jump on the bandwagon you know shorts they've got deep pockets so you know they've got a lot they've got they've got a lot of money you know funds hedge funds banks etc powerful you know I mean, we're talking like hundreds of hundreds of millions you know sometimes billions like individual individuals basically and and, and altogether if they you know short like a sector and the stocks in that sector that puts a heavy it weighs heavy on the stock price especially as people are selling in fear it just um, cripples it basically so let's hope it doesn't happen but if it does and i was thinking this earlier on actually like it crosses your mind from time to time if it does you've got to have a strategy you've got to have a trading you know investing strategy you can't get all you know kind of like emotional earlier on the stock neo it's the fifth today let's just see where it opened up opened up where was it here yeah well that was pre pre pre-market it was rising this is pre-market 6 a.m. UK time. 8 a.m. UK time. Well, basically, look, even in trading time, 2, 2 p.m. or before pre-market pre anyway, yeah, just before pre-market and, and in pre-market, Neo stock rose to more or less, you know, $5.40, let's say, 5.39. So just before the open, that was 2 p.m. UK time. Since then, it's kind of like been falling. Well, that's not bad, 5, 5.40. I think I predicted that actually would rise to, I said 5.50. I, I do recall in one of my other videos recently, Neo. It's just another prediction I've got right. I called it right so many times with the Neo stock as I do with, uh, you know, many other stocks. But yeah, let's change the chart. 
to see that proper on the day chart. As we can see, I said, I think in the previous video, that all comes back to me when I look at this actual chart. I think I said that it would be in that range of, I think I said like going up to, I think I said like 550 to five. I think I said something like that, yeah. It's all coming back to me when I look at, when I actually look at the price action. I said that it would go up to, it would be around about 550. I said, I think I said that, which is about here, which you didn't quite reach. And I said that, you know, it could be going down to around five range, which did occur like a few trading days back, which actually was on the 1st of November. And um, obviously it headed lower on the next trading day to 5.0, you know, 5.09, reached lows of, and that was on the 4th, 4th of November trading day, you know, after the weekend, after the first last, after the 1st of November, which was the last trading day. So today is the fifth and it's just pushed higher, pushed higher in pre-trading. It's currently $5.25, $5.25. So I said that, you know, I, I, it's coming back to me what I think I believe I, what I said, that it would, um, it would go like this up and down, up and down for a bit, but it wouldn't stay sideways for too long based on the price action of... Uh, Neo stock overall, obviously most of it on the way down from the sixty-six dollars. But nonetheless, when you look at the Neo stock price pre, you know, takeoff before it rose to that sixty-six dollars, when it was around about this range, five you know dollars, five and a half dollars, it actually was a spiky stock. It was a spiky stock, like the price action. And it and it proved itself spiky on the way up, it proved itself spiky on the way down. And it's still proving itself spiky. I mean this pattern it's making here, you know, is it is um obviously like it's within that range, you could like box it in. Like if you know you if you if you um you know like if you put a box here, obviously going to end up a rectangle if it carries on that box but I don't think it will I think it will stay fairly boxy and then kind of spring up or it could always could it could always be you know like a dip down but I, I, as I said I think I said about a previous video it won't last long that dip if there is a dip down it will spring back up quite quickly like it might only last one day, it might last half a day, it might only last if, actually a few minutes, even if it does dip down quite low. But I think it's a spiky stock, and I don't think that you're going to see. I don't think you're going to see it like you know, like within this range, go kind of like sideways for too long. I think it's going to be, it's going to start, it's going to break out, it's going to be a spike. And obviously, I, I, I think, you know, we'll start. 80%, 85%, I'm sure that it's going to be a spike going up, going long, rather than going down. As I said, it can always be a spike, you know, it can always be a dip going down, but it's, it's going to be a blip if there is like uh, any, you know, any, um, any give, let's say be quickly short, shored up, let's put it that way. If there's any if there's any weakness, I'm sure that, you know, the retail investors in Neo stock, I'm sure that they will shore it up. I'm sure that they will buy. They're looking for cheaper. And there's new investors looking for Neo at a cheaper price as well. You know, they're fishing for a cheaper price. And that's why you get this sideways motion, this range occurring basically everyone's like thinking about it is it going to go down if it's not going to go down should i buy now when's the best time to buy then when it goes down there'll be others that buy more or buy it you know having waited 
And also then you've got buy orders. You don't just get people sitting there looking, watching it. You're going to get buy orders. You know, someone wants to buy. Like I did the other day, I wanted to buy it $5. Placed a buy order, I went out. Didn't happen. I came back. I thought, 5.14, I think I've got in. I just cancelled the buy order and bought, you know, at the end of the day. For the sake of like, you know, 14, 18 cents or whatever, you know, I can't be bothered. Like, because sometimes even if you put in a buy order you, and you get that buy order, it's not always the, the, the best price. Sometimes, as I said, the stock price will sink and then you just happen to see it when you're looking at the chart at the time and then you buy it and you end up getting a good price. You know, it's, it's, it's just, it's all certs circumstance sometimes you you can't predict like you can't say like five is a good price i'm getting at five sometimes it could possibly go lower i don't know but in this particular case in this stock neo stock like the price action looking at all what we know assuming that there's going to be no dip no stock market crash at least to the end of 2024 i think this is pressing up you know it's pushing up like it's um it's on the up overall. So I see no obstacles ahead per se in that movement. And as I said, I don't think this is going to go sideways within a range for too long. Like this didn't here. When you're looking at you're looking at the day chart, you're looking at four, six, seven, seven trading days. Actually, well, six trading days actually, because when it well, that was the end of this the run, like down, and then it starts here, right? It starts here, try to get back up, and then it doesn't, goes down, tries to get back up again, it goes down, and then at those six days, six trading days, represent the range, you see? So basically the range was from 550 to just under $5. And that's more or less what's repeating here. Like, you know, when it went up, Right, it crashed down, right, it did go up. So really, it, it, it was only five days, you could say, within that range. From here, one, two, three, four, five. And then this move here represented the spike up to just over $6. So here, this represented the fall. You don't count this one. And now, the start of the range is these three here, three trading days. So really, you can discount this one, and these three trading days here are representing the, as I said, the sideways motion. And what did you see? It goes to 539, and it fell within that range as low as, yeah, just below 5. So assuming that that pattern repeats, then basically you've got about five trading days, which is two more trading days. And two more trading days. Today is the 5th of November, which is Tuesday. Two more trading days will be Wednesday, Thursday. So we should see a move, assuming that pattern, pattern repeats. We should see a move on the 8th, Friday. We should see a move on the 8th, guys. Um, or it could come before the 8th. Patterns don't always repeat, repeat. You know, like, they don't always have to repeat exactly, you know, on that. See my point? I don't have to, but it's just roughly. I mean, it could extend. It could go into next week. They could be trading within that range, like more than five trading days. But what I'm trying to say is, I don't think it's going to carry on too long because of the spikiness of the um, neo pattern. So probably, you know, by Friday this week. And I think I said that. I said it would might go into this week. I think I said last week. I think by, you know, this week, the end of this week, we're going to see some kind of big move up. Maybe $6, $6.5, $7 would be my um, guesstimate. I can't be 100% sure. can't be, you know, 100, always 100%. But that's what I, I think could possibly happen, guys, with the Neo stock. So I'm going to keep my eye on it as always. Can't be watching it all the time because I'm looking at other stocks plus trying to get other things done get other things um, in order and 
I will still keep watching it though. And at the moment, I see things moving forward. Like, there's no real news news per se about Neo. Obviously, they're obviously like sales, they're going to be reporting sales sooner or later. And they're, they're likely, you know, they're up somewhat. Oh, not huge amounts, but still increasing. I think that that's what's going to happen. And obviously, like, you know, they're expanding. They've got plans. They're moving forward. Look, guys, I don't see this an obstacle about tariffs in the EU and about US. At the end of the day, it's a small world, right? And you can't, like, unless it's something really serious, you can't punish countries with tariffs because then you know it becomes a tariff war it affects all kinds of fit things you know economies and situations etc this is political guys you know this is political i said it in one of my previous videos you can go and listen to what i said there it's political don't want to go into it again i don't want to keep repeating but that's what it's all about and ultimately neo is the neo stock you know the neo company they're progressing they're moving forward you know you know so look if the west tried to hold neo back from getting into the west in a bigger way in europe in a bigger way and getting into america they will do that Right, they will do that, but not forever, not forever, because they will want something that Neo has, or the Chinese government have, or the Chinese industry have in the future. They will want something, they will need something, and in order to get it, they're going to have to drop this BS tariffs and all this. I mean, you see, Trump was talking about tra tariffs, tariffs, when he was like, wanted to come in, but, 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 but he soon dropped that. When he got in power, he soon dropped that and they were doing deals. Look, look, the Chinese, they own more or less half of America anyway. Let's face it, guys, they, they own a port, like several ports, like, you know, docking ports, you know, shipping ports. You know, can you, can you imagine they probably own most of the gold in the world? I mean, you know, you can't try to, you know, tariff wars and EV wars and it's all ridiculous. It's not going to last, you know, it's not going to last. And look, Neo is so clever, you know, they, they say, well, all right, you want a tariff war because of, on the EVs? Well, we'll build a hybrid, you know, hybrid vehicles. At the end of the day, their vehicles are uh, luxury. Their vehicles are luxury and they've got the technology. Like, they're a brand, guys. They're a brand. Like, I don't know if it's a previous video from um, Amira. She was talking about this, you know, about the um, style. I think she was talking about the style and class of um, a Neo brand, you know, Neo products, etc. And, uh, yeah, I agree. You know, they're, they're classy vehicles, guys. Have you seen them? They're classy vehicles. I mean, they they look nice, you know, and they probably feel nice. It's luxury, you know, the, the interior and exterior look classy, etc. So, plus they've got the technology. So I can't see that they can be stopped. I can't see that they can be stopped. This is all like a, you know pettiness, really. It's, it's politicking. It's politicking, right? So. Let's just keep... Anyway, look, I'm not telling you what to do, right? I've got 12... Well, I told you, like, I bought, I sold. I made a bit, yeah? And then I, I've held some stock, Neo stock. And then I bought more. And then I bought a little bit more. I think I've got... I've only got 1,200 shares, right? I'm trying to add another 200, try to get 1,400 as I said, I'm not going all in, all in. 
because I, when I bought down here and I predicted the move up, I was correct. I was the only channel, by the way, guys. I don't know why I keep saying this, but anyone want to prove me wrong, go and prove me wrong. Like when it was like this day or this day or around about here, I think it was round about here. I said Neo yeah, was gonna gonna rock it. I said Neo was gonna rock it. It was gonna shoot up very very soon. I said, go and check my channel. The other channels wasn't saying it. The other channels were talking about, as I said, fridges in the back of Neo or or whatever. They, they look, guys, that's all BS. I was the only one who predicted. They can't predict it, right? If I worked for a hedge fund, I'd be on three four million pound a year, guys. Yeah, plus bonuses. Because I get it right most of the time. I call it right. They call nothing. They call, you know, they call their wife to make a sandwich. You know, cheese toasted sandwich or whatever. <laughs> and they can't find a coffee. Look, guys, I called it right. So many times on this stock, right from here, right from here, where the you know, little white hand there with the fingers pointing. Somewhere there, I called it. I said, it's going to go. You go and check what I called, yeah? And then you know, I called every single move correct. Every single move. I even called this move up here before it happened. So you know that I call it right. Right? I would be making three, four million pounds if I worked for a hedge fund. So I call it right. I can read any chart, any stock, any price action. Yeah. And what I'm trying to say is that, you know, the other channels are right, they're good, entertaining, whatever. But I was reading some of the comments on them, and people are not happy, guys. People are not happy. I'm not going to mention any names of channels, right? But let's put it this way people are not happy. It's that there's a big, massive conflict within certain channels because of, you know, the P, you know, the. the you know, the person talking, the person who owns the channel or runs the channel or say what says whatever about, say, particularly, you know, Neo stock. They say Neo stock is this, Neo stock's that, but they never, they never really, they, they, look, they can't predict the price, right? They can't call it right. So they never try, they never try to because they can't. They've got no trading, invested experience, guys, you know. So they can never call it. So when well, they talk about, you know, talk about other things and then, but sometimes they say things that are not clear, like a bit ambiguous about sales or certain things, certain models coming out or certain deals. And it's all like guesswork. And then people get, people get upset, you know, if the price drops or the price goes up or whatever. Anyway, there's a, a massive conflict in their comments you can read. And obviously, like I've said this before, like a lot of them, you know, they just do it for the views. And I'm, I'm not, this channel's not monetized, by the way, guys. And their channels are. And really, I don't know how they are because it, it, it baffles me. It really does. It baffles me that people are interested in stocks and shares, <laughs> you know, traders and investors, etc. And they're looking for like good kind of tips per se. I mean, I'm not. You know, it's just not financial advice or hypothetical, but they're looking for good information. Let's put it that way. And what they find is the two types of videos, let's say, about, let's say, Neo stock. One type of videos are talking about, you know, Neo carpet, Neo sales, Neo this, Neo that, blah, blah, blah. And Neo's good, even when it's falling from $66. Neo's a good company. You know, good stock price. Keep buying, keep buying. You know, and then you get the other videos that it's kind of like giving technical analysis, but never really say anything. They 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 add on these, um, you know, breakout things. As I say, like the breakout, you know, indicators. Guys, there's like hundreds of indicators, you know, but they're more or less all kind of similar. In a way, they're like more or less they're removing average overall, right? Obviously, like there's differences in each indicator, but you see them applying indicators and they say, Oh, you know, it's falling below the line, so it's going to continue, or it's risen above these lines or these two lines, so it's going to go up. It doesn't always work, guys, you know. 
I, I used most of those indicators, not all at the same time. But when I first got into trading, I used try these indicators. They don't, obviously they work some of the time, but they don't work all the time. I call it right more more times, a lot more times than any of those indicators can, you know, call it. I, I, I basically I can predict better than AI. Yeah, I can predict better than AI. Get that in your head. Yeah, think about that. Because who was it who predicted the mini twenty twenty four stock market crash? And why? And why me? I predicted it, guys. About one week before, I said it was coming. And it brought down most of the top stocks like Tesla, Amazon, Microsoft, you know, you name it. In, in, in video, all of them, you know, brought, brought it down. You go back, go back, check the video. So I'm better than AI, you know, guys, I'm better than AI. And, you know, my intelligence is, you know, you can, you can go and fill up a... Uh, uh, you know, it'll fill out a warehouse with um, computers. You can get IBM, you know, they're, they're, they're supercomputers. And then you put them all together, they're supercomputers. <laughs> Guys, they're supercomputers all together. Even even their nano, their nano dual, what's it called? Um, but computer, I forget. I forget what it's called, but anyway, look, the best computer, yeah, couldn't predict it like I can. Any, any computer, any trading computer, you name it, guys. I'm the best in the world. I'm the best in the world, guys. The best. Remember that. The best in the I'm not getting it right 100% all of the time, but I'm getting it right most of the time. That's all you need to know. Look, if I put basically trades on, yeah, because too busy for trading per se but if if i was to sit there all day if i was to put trades on up and down you know long and short not just neo stock but you know like a bunch of other stocks right and i'm calling it right most of the time and most of my calls are like you know you know the percentages are far outweigh the losses percentages of losses and guys like i'll be a trillionaire a trillion trillionaire yeah, it's obvious. And that's based on my uh, performance, guys. Right? But I'm doing other things at the moment. So, um, yeah, quantum, that's it. Yeah, the IBM quantum, quantum mechanics, you know, uh, you know, it's here and it's there at the same time. You know what I mean? And the supercomputers. Look, guys, they can't even call it right. They can't do it. You know, these micro trades, trading you know these uh AI, ai trading they can't do it guys like i'm the only one that can do it i'm i'm unique in the world let's put it that way i'm unique in the world no one's better than me you could get the best trade you like you know i'm not going to mention any names but or, or, or people that think they're good at trading guys they make videos they talk about they made this they made that with this stock that stock most of them are all bs and the ones that got loads of followers, like 100,000 followers or more, all they do, they buy a stock when it's low, yeah, like some penny stock, and they say, oh, this stock's going to go up, blah, blah, blah. They mention the stock, and of course, all their followers go and buy it. And then, yeah, well, of course, the stock goes up, doesn't it? Right? Stock goes up, they cash out, they make their money, they're at the top of the pyramid. But they didn't call it right. All they did was use their followers to, to move the price. I'm not doing that, guys. You know that. So, therefore, I must be the best in the world.